Brothers and sisters, simply, the time is now. The time is now. Uh, what time you might be asking? The time when the ensign, the flag, the signal is lifted for the nations to start aligning and, and executing their purposes in order to cause the natural is, uh, fig tree, Israel, the land of Israel, to come into its full inheritance. We are indeed in the last days, we all know that. But in scripture, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 12, Isaiah chapter 18 verse 3, Isaiah chapter 49 verse 22, talks about an ensign being lifted. There may be other scriptures, but these are the ones that I'm using today. Yeah, That Isaiah 18 is an assignment to the land of Kenya. Uh, we have dealt with that fairly extensively already. Uh, there is that assignment, it's time. There is a timing to it. it it's, not just, it's not just left open to the occupants of the land of Kenya to choose when uh, to fulfill that assignment. Yeah. And verse 3 there says, when we see an ensign lifted. Yeah. So that ensign has been lifted, and I put it to you that that ensign was lifted on October 7, 2023, when Hamas fighters, the Palestinians, attacked Israel. And this war is part of that ensign. Uh, you can see the war again is referenced in various scriptures, yeah, uh, beginning with Isaiah 11, which is when I personally had uh, on, on October 7th that uh, the Palestinians had uh, crossed over into Israel and, uh, at, and done the atrocities that they did, grew some things not, not what you've mentioned. I wouldn't even want to talk about them, yeah, that they did. I rushed to the Lord, to my prayer chamber, and asked God what's going on, yeah, and, and of course, inter in intercession for Israel. And one of the scriptures that the Lord gave me was Isaiah chapter 11. Now, uh, that chapter, in that, that whole chapter is for this season, actually. Uh, but um, the piece from verse from verse 1 to verse 10 that is actually to verse 9 uh, that is actually meant when you read it it's that it, it is something that is yet to happen and it will happen after we go through this war, war time season yeah we are in a war time season that will manifest thereafter but um, uh, verse 10 talks about Jesus Christ uh, his, his uh, sacrifice for us and then from verse 11 is after Jesus' sacrifice yeah, um, it is it is it's a very beautiful scripture actually that verse 11 God says that he will stretch out his hand a second time yeah to restore to return you know uh, the, the lost people the lost tribes of Egypt so when was the first time yeah. The first time I put it to you was in 1948, when Israel, um, you know, became a nation state again after 2,000 years. Yeah. You know, they had, in history, they had been destroyed by the Romans. And, and even that land, uh, the Romans, uh, you know, seized, changed the name of it from Israel to Syria-Palestina. Yeah, they chose the, the name Palestine because the Palestinians uh, historically before that were the great arch enemies of Israel. So that's where these Palest Palestinians of today have gotten the name, the arch enemy of, of, of Israel, the sword of God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know names, you, you don't just pick names, even when you're naming your children. Don't just pick names. You call them hyena and disaster and all these other things. Trouble, pain, injury. Yeah. 
Name, names are prayers. We, we all know that. I, I believe. Yeah. I, 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 my, my main uh, uh, calling is, is to mature people, people we meet. Yeah. So I hope you already understand. But if you're not yet there, uh, grow quickly in the word and in prayer. Yeah. Uh, we are in the last days. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. But in Isaiah 11, the, the first time the, it, it, the first time I said was in 1948, and Isaiah 11 talks of God is saying He will do it a second time. So when is the second time? The second time is when Israel comes into its full inheritance of territory, as was promised uh, to Abraham and reiterated by Moses and by other prophets. Yeah. It is the time when um, the ten lost tribes that God will restore them. Yeah, He will bring them back to the land. And I said this a second time because the first time was when Israel got independence. Actually, not became a, a recognized nation state. Uh, that's 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 uh, that's yeah. So that is it. Um, and of course, uh, that is now happening, beginning with this war. Yeah, uh, so read that Isaiah 11, all of it. It is also captured in Jeremiah 47. Yeah, and uh, in that Jeremiah 47, if you go down to uh, the whole chapter is relevant to today's war, but if you go down to verse 7, yeah, it, it talks of Gaza uh, or the sword of God, the Philistines, attacking Ashkelon. Now, uh, in biblical history, the Philistines had five city states. Yeah, uh, I can remember. I think two or three right now off the top of my head. Uh, of course, Gaza was 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 a bigger. I believe the biggest one. That's where Samson, you know, pushed down the pillars. He staged his final assault on them. It was in Gaza, and then there is Ashdod, Ekron. Uh, and Ashkelon, uh, and there's a fifth one, I can't remember right now, top the top of my head. Uh, so, for in Jeremiah 47, verse 7, it says that uh, the Philistines, the Gaza, will swoop down or will attack uh, Ashkelon. That could not have been possible in biblical history times. Why? Because they were all Philistine. Uh, city states uh, they, they all belong to the same people so the, the philistines would not be attacking yeah basically that would amount to a civil war in biblical times yeah uh, and i don't think that's what uh, god is doing there is not orchestrating a civil war no the only time that could happen is right now because again remember for a time uh, even the Philistines were destroyed. Yeah, the actual Philistines, the ones who are actually called Philistines, they they disappeared from history uh, 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 during those attacks. The Assyrians, the Babylonians, they disappeared from history. Uh, these Arabs who call themselves Palestinians now, we, we all know I've just picked a name. They don't have a biological link to the Philistines. So, but. Um, uh, the only time that could have been possible for Gaza to attack Ashkelon is in 2020, now, in this season. Yeah. And actually, eh, on, on 7th October 2023, they actually did attack Ashkelon <laughs> yeah, as one of the places. Not It wasn't just Ashkelon, but it was one of the places. Because right now, Ashkelon is a, is a town or a city in, in Israel. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, it is assigning the time when that would happen. Yeah, uh, Jeremiah 47. It's all, the war is also captured in Zephaniah chapter 2, Zechariah chapter 9. Kindly read them uh, and see uh, those amazing things. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, for us who are, I, I, I like to call us correctly aligned to what God is doing on earth right now. Uh, we are praying vigorously that the whole counsel of God spoken in those scriptures I've given you, uh, and chiefly in Isaiah 11, uh, from verse 12 to 14, that that counsel of God will be executed fully. We are not praying for peace. I've already done that video. Yeah, 
actually i go through news to see how far we are why because uh prophecy must be fully every word jesus vowed uh, uh, in the previous video just now when we were talking about uh, being smitten uh, jesus vowed that every word that he prophesied must come to pass so unless that happens jesus ain't returning soon yeah that is number one number two uh, you know the devil has a strategy to you know you, you you bring suffering you bring war people die people you know get injured all sort of evil things happen and then uh there is all of a sudden the un and others are pushing for peace or oh, let's negotiate let's let, 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 let's, let's stop this war then what would happen the devil goes caught free again because if jesus isn't returning soon until the word is accomplished the devil is still allowed to roam with his, you know, his kingdom, his demons and all, to, to roam around free and wreak more havoc on the earth. Yeah. So that's what his strategy is. And why would you, believer, I'm talking to you believers, now want to, you know, to, to pray in peace now, only to allow this kind of suffering, because this prophecy must be executed in full. To, to allow it in, in another generation in future. We, we have already suffered the pain and the loss that we have. Yeah, uh, we don't need to transfer that pain a second time to another generation. That's not what you want to bequeath to your children. Yeah. So we are praying vigorously that the full counsel of God is executed. Israel must swoop down upon Palestine to the west and to the east and upon all the shoulders of Palestine, just as it is written in Isaiah 11. That is the prayer. Yeah, That is the prayer that we are praying. Now, you know, uh, prophecy like this one that we've talked about, uh, we must, the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy, yeah, 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, that we must war with prophecy. Yeah, it is not sufficient uh, for you to just receive a prophetic word. You know that believer, mature, mature son of God. You know that now. Yeah. You must pray it in to existence. If you don't, it, 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 it may skip to another time, especially if it is written in the word of God. It may move on to another generation. Yeah. So we must war with it. Uh, I, the, Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 2, uh, from verse 21 to 39, I'm looking at my notes in case you see me glancing down. Uh, it talks of two prophets, uh, Simeon and Anna. They were in the temple most of their days, uh, praying in uh, the prophecies about the coming Messiah, about Jesus being born. Uh, and they remained there diligently, praying and interceding, until they, they saw the Messiah with their eyes as he was brought on the eighth, eighth day by their parents. Yeah. So if if the prophetic word for the birth of Jesus, which is through the Bible, yeah, uh, you can see Isaiah chapter 9, it's, it's there, uh, to us a, a child is born. Yeah. If, if that word being so critical, if Jesus being the, the, the cornerstone his, the prophetic word had to be prayed in. Just imagine all other prophetic words. Yeah. Imagine this one about Israel. It, it needs you and me to stand in prayer. Yeah. And uh, now that the sign, I've told you the sign was lifted. The sign is this war. Yeah. It was lifted in October, on October 7th, 2023. Now that it is lifted. And you can see, read for yourself those scriptures I've quoted for you. Uh, you will see that the nations are actually arising. Yeah? It, it, there is right now Operation Prosperity Guardian, led by the United States, uh, that is protecting the Red Sea against Houthi and other enemy attacks. Yeah? Uh, so the nations are rising uh, to do what they are meant to do. My fear and my worry is that Kenya, we are so preoccupied with the cares of this world, of this modern day living that we are going through. The hassles, the need for bus fare and for rent, 
and such like, yeah, the ministry, that we miss the assignment, that we miss what God is doing. Yeah, that is my worry. So as we pray, those who are praying in Kenya and for Kenya, we pray that we don't miss it. Yeah, it's that is very important. Uh, you might be asking in that Isaiah 11. I'm just trying to to uh, to show you, yeah, to open your eyes to see that indeed this war that is happening is what is prophesied in Isaiah 11. You might ask, for example, in verse 13 of that scripture, yeah, it talks about their Judah and Ephraim. Yeah, Ju Judah is uh, 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 is the kingdom, the southern kingdom the one where uh, included Jerusalem, yeah, basically made of, uh, of, of two tribes, Benjamin and Judah. They are the ones who remained in the land. So here it is representative of the modern day Israel. Yeah. While Ephraim are the last lost ten tribes, that's what the Bible, it's one of the names that the Bible ascribes to, the, to those tribes, the ten northern tribes, the northern kingdom. They are also called Ephraim. Yeah. Uh, Ephraim was the son of, of Joseph. Uh, do your Bible uh, research. Now, uh, Ephraim represents the lost tribe. It represents also the Jews that are in the diaspora that have either uh, decided they will not return. Yeah, and and you might be asking, uh, where is Ephraim today? Uh, you know, joining together with Judah uh, to swoop down on on the uh, on the Philistines. Yeah, Philistines we've dealt with already. I've canvassed that one. Uh, the Ephraim, for example, look at it in the U.S. Yeah, that's a good example. In the U.S., look at which is the most powerful lobby group in the U.S. currently and in historically. Yeah, which is the most powerful one? I, I'll answer that one for you quickly, and you can do your research and see. There is a group called the American Israel Public Affairs committee american israel public affairs committee do you know those guys are so powerful that for you to be confident of winning a presidential election you must go address these guys yeah you must get their approval otherwise you risk losing it even obama had to you know recant he had to to there's words he'd spoken against them and against Israel. He, he had to he had to eat eat his words before he could get into that office. Biden has addressed them. He is far left, yes, but <laughs> he had to conform. That is a most powerful lobby group right now. Why do you think the the U.S. is so closely uh, entwined with the you know with the affairs of Israel? giving them trillions of shil of or trillions of Kenya shillings worth of Kenya shillings yeah in dollars of course every year for military support why have they quickly rushed their military hardware uh, to support Israel right now my friends it is Ephraim influencing them it is Ephraim influencing them yeah and because of the influence of this lobby group in in a uh, United States uh, government affairs. It is so powerful right now. They even influence election of, of you know of, of other officials, senators, and so forth in the U.S. Yeah, just you know, just Google American Israel Public Affairs Committee. See the impact uh, because they are able to influence the U.S. so much, and because therefore the U.S. has sway with the West. We are now seeing. For example, that coalition, Prosperity Guardian in the Red Sea. Yeah. So when when you see the Bible saying that Ephraim will come together with the with the Judah, it is happening before your eyes. It is you you, you realize uh, Isaiah's ministry was partially to conceal. Yeah that people will not see. But this is the season. You, you read Isaiah six. This is the season when the cities will be destroyed. Which cities? Gaza, yeah, for for one, yeah, those cities. If Gaza is actually a strip, there is 
these Kanyunis and these others, I don't remember all their names, in that Gaza Strip, when they are being destroyed. So this is the season when, when we will be able to read and understand fully what Isaiah was concealing and hiding. It is for our time now. Yeah. So when you see him in Isaiah 11 talking about uh, 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 Ephraim and Judah, it is happening before your eyes. The ships there may be United States ships, true. Yeah, and of course for other nations. I saw the other day India said 10 warships. The British are there, the Germans, the French, and the Japanese. Yeah, nations have arisen. The inside, <laughs> the inside has caused them to arise. Yeah. So when you see that, it is because of the influence of, of course, other nations may be getting influenced by the U.S., but the U.S. is influenced by Ephraim, American Israel Public Affairs Committee. So that's how it's going down. Yeah, This is the time. This is the time uh, for us to, you know, for, for us to now get our act in Kenya, also in, you know, here in Kenya. Why? You remember the last video uh, uh, when we were talking about the smiting. Uh, I told you that that Africa is in a jubilee season. Yeah, uh, it is both because of the mercy of God for the suffering. Yeah, you, you know God doesn't enjoy watching human beings suffer, so He has had mercy on Africa. But it is also to allow us as Africans to by choice step into correct alignment with his purpose and execute the destiny which is determined upon Africa uh, in this season. And that destiny is, uh, is, 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 is standing up on behalf or in support of Israel that they may actually uh, manifest or you know execute their full inheritance to themselves from from promised to abraham by god yeah so that is the assignment that is why we are in a jubilee and that is why i urge you all of you especially kenyans out there believers pastors apostles prophets teachers the fivefold ministry any other believer, even if you don't call, you, you are not in the fivefold. You don't feel like you are. Yeah. Let us correctly align ourselves to what is required. Yeah. And I will be dealing that uh, with, with that some more in the, the next few videos. Uh, by the grace of God, kindly join me uh, for those ones. Until the next time, shalom and God bless you.